In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show and proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let us partake of the cup. Father, we thank you for the greatest expression of your love by sending Jesus to die on the cross on our behalf. And because he was crucified and because he died, we no longer have to face spiritual death, but we can have eternal life in you. With that, we give you all the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be seated and pass the cup to the side so our connecting can collect that. Amen. How was your week? Bless. Amen. How was your week? Praise God. That's a good bit. Either or <laughs> Praise God. So, I'd like to share with you a message of part one. Uh, I'll continue next week. Of a very basic, again, message, but this is what we all, we, we all need to hear. We all need to internalize in our lives. And I titled this message this morning. Give me about 45 minutes. Let me share to you when our faith is being tested. When our faith is tested. And this will be part one. I'll be uh, sharing you four points. I'll just be mentioning one point today. Then we'll continue on next week with the three other important points. And with this, let us ask God to guide us. Father God, once again, we do not want this sermon to be just stuck into our head. But let it be stuck into our hearts that it may produce faith and conviction. We ask for your Holy Spirit to be our teacher because it is impossible for us to understand or comprehend your word because it is not mentally discerned, but it is spiritually discerned. May we hear it not only with our mind, but may we hear it from our heart. May it not only inform, but again, let it transform us through your Holy Spirit as we listen to your sermon this morning. And with this, we will give you all the praise and we will give you all the thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us give God a big God. Thank God last uh, Friday night we had our corporate prayer and fasting. We had a good time praying to God and seeking God. Now this morning let me share with you a message when our faith is being tested. Next slide. Notice my sermon title is not if we are tested. It did say if we are being condemned. Or it doesn't mean if we are being maligned. Or if we are being punished. As Christians, let us know that it is not us personally being attacked punished or condemned we don't use those words it is when our faith is tested and with this I underline the word when it means that testings will come it is not that if our faith is tested it will be tested I guess by now as Christians you would know that even Christians and those people who are closer to God do experience trials and persecutions and difficulties in their lives. That's why it is not if, but it is when. Sabi ng mga Ilocano, when. Yes. It means that it will surely come. Whether you're a Christian or not, life is full of difficulties. So, when, and then I underline the word faith. You are not experiencing difficulties and trials just because of you yourself. It is not you per se being attacked. It is not you per se, but it is your faith. Okay? It is your faith, not because of you. I don't know why I'm experiencing experiencing this multiple uh, 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 difficulties. I must be special. 
No, that's not true. It is not you being tested, it is your faith. And again, I put there when your faith is tested, I use the word tested. I didn't use the word condemned. I didn't use the word punished. I didn't use the word uh, whatever negative word. Because when one is being, uh, 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 when one experiences some difficulties in their lives, it doesn't mean God is punishing you. The devil would whisper into your ears that you're being punished. But that whisper is a careless whisper. <laughs> it's not from God. You see? It is not God who whispers to you that mm, you are being targeted because you're naughty. Okay? It is not to punish you. It is not to condemn you. It is not to judge you. It is to test your faith. Got it? That's all. Well, that's the gist of our message. If you get this, this statement, that's it. When my faith is tested, not punished, not condemned, it is tested. Next slide. Now let's uh, let's have some basic truth. Number one, Christian life is a faith life. You all heard this from me many, many times. Christian life is not an emotional life. It is not a religious life. It is a faith life. For the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. It is not an emotional life. Neither it is, neither is it a religious life. Being a Christian doesn't make you religious. It makes you spiritual. And spirituality is faith. Okay? So it's all about our faith life. Next slide. The presence of storm, difficulties, and challenges in, a life, in our lives is not a sign of weakness of faith. Agree? Because sometimes we hear people say, oh, you're weak, that's why you're being Oh, you're weak, that's why you're being tried. Oh, you're weak, that's why you have a lot of problems. It's not the presence of those problems. Look at Job. He was perfect. He was upright. And yet, he experienced multiple trials and difficulties in his life. What? That, why? To test his faith. Not to condemn, not to punish, but to test. So if one has a challenge, a persecution, a, a storm in his life, it doesn't mean that you're weak. It doesn't mean that God is punishing you. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong, maybe. It doesn't also mean that you are very active in the Lord. It comes because all will be tested. All our faith will be tested. So, but erase this wrong teaching or notion or phrase in your life that God is single, singling me out because I'm weak. No, no. Everyone will experience multiple persecutions and difficulties in life. Okay, next slide. Learning anything so far? Okay. Now, one of, one of the verses I like in the Bible is this. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 29, from the words of Jesus himself, he said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. It's a faith life. We should focus on building our faith. We should focus on making our faith strong. Because according to Jesus' word, it's all about our faith. Right? Whatever we want, to receive as promised by God in Matthew 9 29 said it will be done for you according to your faith right huh? faith 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 Christian life is a faith life next slide and there's one verse in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says that without faith it is impossible to please God. It is a life of faith. 
And we cannot please God without faith. Now you all know how we can receive faith. You all know that verse. Where is that verse again? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we cannot please God if we don't have faith. Actually, the Bible even says in Romans chapter 14 that anything that is not of faith is sin. Anything done not by faith is sin. We cannot please God without our faith. It will be done for us according to our faith. So faith drives our maturity. Faith drives our miracles. Faith drives our breakthrough. Faith drives our Christian life. Agree? It's a faith life. Actually, Christian maturity means level of faith. What is the level of your Christianity? Oh, I've been a Christian for 20 years. It's not the length. Oh, I've been in church every Sunday. Good, you should. It's not the level of faith. I have many Bibles. Good, keep it. <laughs> but again, it's not the level of faith. Oh, I occupy a high position in the church. Good. Keep it. <laughs> but it's not the level of faith. Hello? Hello? Level of faith is the level of our, level of maturity is our level of faith. Let it be done according to your faith. Okay? Next slide. Now the disciples ask Jesus in Luke chapter 17 verse 5 increase our faith. Well, Pastor Noli, if it is all about faith, if my life is a faith life, if I move God, not by my tears, if I move God, not by the length of my prayers, if I move God by faith, then the disciples are correct when they say, if it is all about faith, Lord, increase my faith. How do you increase your faith? No. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. So read the Bible more. Hello? Amen. Now that's amen at a certain level. Knowing God through His Word is different from experiencing God in our lives. Amen. Knowledge is different from experience. Right? Huh? So how do we really increase our faith? Read the Bible, get to know more, get more of God's promises, right? Romans 10, 17, faith comes like what? Faith, faith what? Come talk to me, it makes the sermon shorter. Faith comes. Now listen to me, because this may be the first time you hear me say this. It's one thing for faith to come. It's another thing for faith to grow. Ooh. Oh yes, by reading the Bible, faith will come. But what's happening to your faith? Is it growing? Amen. So how can we really increase our faith? That's what I will be teaching you for this week and next week. Ooh. How we can increase our faith. Okay? Next slide. James chapter 1, 3 and 4, the Bible says, Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Now, I believe this is new this is a new international version so when it says perfect what does it mean mature so let the testing of your faith produces patience and once you have that praise patience have its work that you may be mature complete like nothing so how do we really really grow our faith 
Am I testing it? Our faith can grow through tests. I like that. Matthew is ahead of me. <laughs> tests increase our faith. It is not the presence of it. It is not... No, I'm jumping myself again. Yeah. So let me leave you with four, but I'll just mention to you one, so you will come back next week. <laughs> okay. I know. This is getting you. So next slide, Matthew. I want more. We should start to create a daily consciousness that our faith is being tested. Number one, change it. Change your mind. Replace the thought that when you're being attacked, you're being punished. Erase that. I'm not being attacked. I'm not being condemned. I'm not being punished. Okay? I'm being tested. There's a lot of difference in all that. Hello? Even you do nasty things. I don't believe that my God is a punisher. My God is a lover. And his love sometimes corrects. God corrects you out of love. Because God is love. Punishment is because of anger. And my God is not an angry God. My God is a loving God. Amen. We need to clap our praise to God. <laughs> Even though I did something wrong, my God, who loves me, will correct me. And some of God's corrections may not be so good. But if you look at it as a correction, as a testing, not as a punishment, not, not as a condemnation. You will, God, you will love God more. In order for us to love God more, we need to know Him more. And we can know Him more through His Word. So let us start a consciousness in our life. My life is being tested. My faith is being tested. So all it is, it's all about tests. And again, you hear from me many, many times. You're praying for promotion. Actually, you're praying for test. Hello? Yeah. Promote me to grade two. Pass the test. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. I want to go to college. Pass the NCEE in our days. National Arts <laughs> Entrance <laughs> Examination. You want more blessings? Yeah. You want breakthroughs? Yeah. You want to grow? Yeah. We are asking for this. Yeah. Not asking for difficulties, although tests may come in difficulties. Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes. Huh? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. But again, the difficulty is not to punish. Tell your neighbor not to punish. Yes. Tell your neighbor God loves you so much. Yes. You are too lovable to be punished. Yes. I like that. Huh? God is love. Yeah. Yeah. No? We are too lovable and too cuddly to be punished by God. What? Too cuddly. We are. Oh, hallelujah. We're like teddy bears. So, so start this consciousness. Okay, difficulties, trials, these are all things. Promote, Lord, I need to be promoted test. Lord, I need, need more blessings test. Lord, I need to grow test. Because test comes before promotion. And don't copy tests. Don't copy answers. <laughs> because your life is unique from other people's lives. You're unique. Tell me, you're unique. You're unique. Look at your face. You're unique. You're unique. You're unique. The, and God, the worst thing to do in this life is to compare your life with others. Wow. You know why? You know why? We are actually diminishing our worth when we compare ourselves to others because God counts us as one unique, special being. Yes. 
I'm not saying our others are lower than you. No, you are special to God. God deals with us individually. You know, so God gives us those best things to promote us. For our faith to grow. Okay? So let me leave you with this one. And I will talk about this number one for half an hour. <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> how? So the question is, how do we increase our faith? Next slide. Grow. Read. <laughs> 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 so can we just replace the word beautiful peace? Let's say it, let's call the dog go. Some of the tests are really difficult. Huh? No? It's a reality. Now, I didn't say, number one, that how do we increase our faith through life's difficulties? It's not, I'm jumping myself, next slide. It is not the presence of difficulties that will make our faith strong, but it is when we overcome those difficulties by responding to it positively. We need to read this once again because if it is through the many difficulties your faith will grow <coughs> it's not it people christians have many difficulties but they don't really grow why because they fail to overcome they ignore they sleep it under the curtain now, if it is the presence of difficulties that will make you strong, how about the poor people? Would you say that all poor who experience difficulties all their lives, their faith is not strong? Or their faith is strong? How about those rich people who doesn't even have any difficulties? Would you say they are spiritually mature? Maybe somewhat, I don't think all. Oh. So it's not the presence of difficulties. It is how we respond to those difficulties. And how should we respond? Two ways. Negatively, positively. It cuts both ways. When we experience challenges, when we experience storm in our lives, it can make us curse God and be far away from God, or it can draw us closer to God and experience Him more. It is not the presence, it is not the many difficulties, it is how we respond positively and overcome the difficulties in our lives that make, makes our faith strong. Clear? It is responding positive. The process of it will, for example, later we will be eating. <laughs> Does that surprise you? <laughs> no. You know, when you go to the table, there is stand in front of those white spread of food. It will not make you full. It will not make you busog. By just looking at it, or just by just being in front of it. I know you don't stand in front of the food there. What do you think? <laughs> like last Friday, after fasting, wow. <laughs> Suddenly, we're like ravening wolves. <laughs> so, it is not the presence. It is not looking at the food that will make you so. It is by... Taking it. So eating it is the positive response to the food in front of you. It will make you so it. The presence of difficulties will not make your faith strong. 
It will when you positively respond to it. Hello? That gets me now. Not the presence. Not because, oh, I become strong because I have a lot of them now. Not even because it's light or heavy. Because it's many, because it's few. Some people only have few difficulties, but they grow in faith because they respond positively. Some people, some Christians do not even grow, even they only have one difficulty because they always fail to respond positively. Not the presence. I will respond. Next slide. Like Jonah. You know the story of Jonah, right? The one who got blind because his hair was cut. Yes. <laughs> huh? Like there's one Christian who said, my favorite Bible character is Zena. <laughs> then the other guy said, oh, my, my favorite Bible character is Hercules. <laughs> oh, mine is Mario. Ah, Pastor Jim, Super Mario. So like Jonah. Because of his disobedience and because of his hard-headedness, you know, God had him swallowed by a big fish. Oh, man. Huh? It's one thing to swallow a fish. It's another thing to be swallowed by a fish. <laughs> well, they say it's a whale. Well, the Bible didn't say it's a whale. The Bible just said it's a big fish. And he didn't die. He was inside the belly of the fish. Huh? With all the jellies and with all the everything in there. It's dark then. You don't have lights. It's slimy. Doesn't smell good. He had to be swallowed by the fish. And mind you, it's not being punished. God is love, right? God wants to teach him something. Hello? Uh, so if you feel in your heart, if you feel like I'm just like Jonah just now, my life now, I'm just like being swallowed by a big fish, man. And Jonah said in Jonah chapter 2 verse 7, when I had lost all hope. There more, no more hope inside the bellies. The fish belly? No more. Although, fish belly is good. <laughs> to grill. <laughs> to grill, but not to be inside. <laughs> so, when I had lost all hope. Woo! See, he can condemn God and curse God. Mm -hmm. Why? Why did you even allow this? If there is God, why am I inside the belly fish? Fish is bad. Right? You know, you see, people, people ask us question. If there is a God, why all the injustices? If there is God, why all these murders? If there, you see, we are living in a world where the devil is God, small g. 1 Corinthians 4.4. 4. So here, I don't want to go there, but Jonah could even say, oh, I don't want to believe in God anymore. If there is a God, why did he even allow me to be in a belly? Fish. No. He acknowledged it to be a testing. And he responded positively to it. What did he do? When I had lost all hope, I turned my thoughts once more to the Lord and my earnest prayer to you in your holy temple. Wow. That is positive response. If you're being challenged right now, if, you're, if your life has a lot of multiple difficulties right now, if your life is encountering a storm and you feel like Jonah, I guess it's time that we turn our thoughts once again to the Lord and pray a prayer. 
You see, prayer, look at that verse. Prayer can even make the belly of the fish God's holy temple. <laughs> Hello? Yes. When he prayed that prayer, while he was praying that, he may still be inside the belly of the fish. But when he acknowledged and he turned his thoughts to the Lord and prayed to him, God said, okay, Jonah, I will be with you in the belly of the fish and let's make this belly my temple. <laughs> Meaning, God is dead. Right? The worst that we can ever experience is being in the middle of the big difficulty without God. You don't want to be dead. You don't want to be alone, right? You want God in the middle of it. You want God to be with you. Well, I want God to be with me, especially if I'm in the belly of the fish. I don't want to be in paradise alone. I don't want to be in paradise without my God. So it's not the place, it's not the situation, it's the presence of God. Amen.